Welcome back to Kind of Funny Sony Spider-Man Universe in Review, formerly known as the Sony Pictures Universe of Marvel Characters in Review. Of course, I'm Tim Geddes, and I'm joined by the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. Morbius. The big daddy himself, Greg Miller. Morbius. And the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Mike Morbius. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Kevin Coelho has refused to watch this movie in theaters or at all. Um, I'm hoping that does not threaten the sanctity of our ranking system, but we'll have to wait till the end of this episode to find out because this is kind of funny. We can do that. We week. can just say no. <laughs> I didn't realize that was the thing we could do. Uh, hey, man, no one controls him. Kevin A. Coelho. Okay. Brandon Jones retired the other day. And I was like, we can do that. We can <laughs> just <laughs> stop getting ideas, Nick. I need somebody to be here for Craven the Hunter in a couple man, I'll tell you in a year. Who the hell knows? Whatever. Oh. This is in review. Each and every week we get together to talk about, uh, to rank, review, and recap different movie franchises. Uh, you can get it on youtube.com slash kind of funny or roosterteeth.com. You can also get it as a podcast by searching your favorite podcast service for kind of funny in review. We'll be right there for you. If you wanted to get the show ad free and if you wanted to watch it live as we record it, just like Daniel Hodder 7, Joshy G, James Roach did. You got to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny where you can be a Patreon producer like Molecule, Fargo, Brady, Pranksy, or an anonymous donor. <gasps> they just wanted to, to make this show happen. And they specifically wrote in and said, this one's for Morbius. They didn't really do that. But for I just want Morbius. the case. Uh, today we're brought to you by Uplift. <laughs> but we're going to have to talk to you about that later. Um, we are going to be talking about one of the longest awaited movies of all time. Not because people were really looking forward to it, but just because of sheer dates and numbers and pandemics involved. Um, I do want to pour one out real quick to the Morbius trailer. We will never see it again in theaters. After seeing it no less than 37 times, yep, yep, I'm yep. sad to see it go. But hey. Now we can move on to greener pastures. The trailer made it look like a more interesting movie. You know what I mean? They had the Spider-Man in there. They had the, the Vulture. I was looking forward to all that. Yeah. Wasn't in it. Wasn't in it. A lot of stuff in the trailers. Not in the movie. Not in it. Get into all that. Everybody's like, you're a doctor. Remember, you save lives. That's not in it. Mm -hmm. and he, I, when he did the Venom line, but he didn't do the... Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm Dr. Michael Morbius at your service. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. I'm Dr. Michael Morbius. That's your science. <laughs> <laughs> the Godfather. All right. Uh, so we are talking today about Morbius, Morbius. with a runtime of, uh, I'm going to say it, I'm thankful for it, hour 44 minutes. Could it have been better? Sure. Could it have been sure. worse? Definitely. Yes. Definitely. Uh, it was released on, you can't make this up, everybody. I hope that one day people are listening to this review in the future and are like, did they really? release morbius on april 1st on april fool's day 2022 mm -hmm. yeah they did originally set for july 31st 2020 it is now coming out so so much later than that like i said this a couple of weeks ago but just a reminder for people to understand this the first trailer for morbius came out before spider-man no way home even begun production so that's what we're dealing holy with here, shit everybody. That's what we're dealing with. That's unreal. I would have loved it if there was just something, some lines were crossed and communication screwed up. Like this movie was eventually going to get canceled, but they accidentally did release it on April Fool's. Uh, like, well, I thought that was, I thought you, you like, were joking about that. You mean like they, they made the movie and then they were like, let's just not put this out. But somebody accidentally hit publish and it just yeah, went to all the Yeah, and they were trying to make it an April Fool's joke, but it like went too far. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It definitely went too far. This one was directed by Daniel. Espinoza, a Swedish film director known for directing Life in 2017 with Jake mm -hmm. Gyllenhaal, Rebecca Ferguson, and Ryan Reynolds, a movie that uh, is rumored to be oh. a predecessor to Venom in 2018. There was some whole thing, but that is not substantiated, yeah. and the director was even kind of weird about it, but now that he's doing Morbius, it makes it all even more confusing, but I guess they don't give a shit either. Wait, like, Life was rumored to be with Venom? Yeah. 
where there's like the was like the space a space station one, right? Where they they find the thing on the space station, and like it's basically a horror movie. They have to survive and get out of there without the thing getting. And then at the end of it, the two pods escape, and then he's he's like, "Oh no, I'm gonna go to Earth." And then he goes, "Oh no, I'm not going to Earth. I'm going out into the fucking stratosphere." And the other pod, spoilers, had the Venom thing go to Earth. I don't know. It was that, a cool movie. Cool. I, yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah, I spoiled it for you just now. Why haven't we watched that? We should watch that for this review. Because I, it's, I'm going to say the word unsubstantiated again, Greg. Just sure, but you. you know, I mean, Nick just Great said word. it was Venom. Great Nick word. just said it was Venom going to the Venom. Mm-hmm. Venom. 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 <laughs> Speaking of, uh, music was done by John Ekstrand, uh, a composer that is known to collab with Daniel on his movies. Uh, but unfortunately, this movie did not have the vocal track we all expected like Venom. But Nick previewed it a little bit earlier. But Kev, if you could please bring up the latest kind of funny TikTok. Uh, mm-hmm. There is a version that you all can share with your friends. <sighs> Nick Sharpino was nice enough to lend his vocal stylings mm-hmm. to this film. Like Mobius. Yeah. So there you go. Yes. There we go. That is that is it. You can share that clip with all your friends instead of watching this movie. If you so why are you saying Mike Morbius? His name is Michael Mike Morbius. It's cool. I Mike. got a. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think about it that they way? Never call him Mike. They never call him Mike. He's Michael. You know what I mean? You know, he's got name. one friend out there who's like, nah, hey, look at he the hospital with you. Like, what about that nurse that got drained of all her blood? That Nick, well, here's the only a question. If you showed up one day and I called you by a different name, and then you're like, that's not my name. And I was like, too bad. There's been 12 Steves before you. Would you be like, all right, cool. I guess I'm Steve. And then the rest of the our rest lives, of life. adulthood, I still <laughs> called you Steve. Yeah. Would you be like, this is chill, whatever? I would just be your best friend at that point. I feel like that's how best friends are made. Like, hey, don't 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 even bother respecting the bare minimum, which is my given name at birth by my parents who I may or may not exist anymore. I don't even know if, if, if Lucius or they were rich, or apparently, and they just left me all their fortune. OK, I thought he was a criminal. No, was that not a thing? He's oh, definitely he a rich. dancer. OK. Oh, God, the dancing part. The best part of this whole movie before we get into spoilers when was fucking the Doctor Who vampire runs next to the subway train for five minutes like i get it he's running why <laughs> <laughs> cut to morbius cut to him cut to morbius <laughs> cut to him how fucking long is this subway <laughs> so I'm, t- I'm just gonna stop you here right here nick from here on out it's full spoilers for this okay. one We're, there's like there's not even a, a shred of th- worth talking about that has nothing to do with spoilers in this and even with spoilers i'm not sure that there's much so go for it nick whatever you want to say I just the, my favorite well two things happened during this movie that i think <sighs> um these are not even spoilers because they didn't happen in the movie they happened in the seats around that we were, the that were way more um interesting than the movie itself one andy passed his his empty bowl of popcorn down to me it thinking he was going to get me thinking he was going to get me but he couldn't possibly have known that i ate a whole small popcorn right before the movie started he came it was half late. full. You, God, I'm so mad Andy. about that. I would have eaten the rest of it, Andy. I didn't know that. I <laughs> there was so much in me. there. Why did you laugh at me when I said no? <laughs> because you never, ever turn down the opportunity for popcorn. You steal popcorn from me. You take the bucket from me and then keep it for way longer than I'd assume you would have kept it. And I'm like, oh, well, am I going to get my popcorn back? This guy's just going at it right now. Do you know that's so true? And finally, Tim, you've been saying it for years, but my mistrust of all of you has finally bitten me in the ass. I could have had more popcorn yesterday. You yeah. could have had more popcorn. The second thing yeah, that was the, hilarious that happened was well, real, real quick, I just want to say, before the dancing thing, it's just sticking with the, the real world situation we had. Um, in order, it was Andy on the left, and then Gia, and then me, and then Cool Greg, and then Nick. Yeah. All right? And from all of that, because Cool Greg, number one, anticipated movie, like legit, legit. He wanted to watch Morbius, and he had a great time. So take that for what it's worth, everybody. But... Uh, me, Gia, and Cool Greg were in the middle of this food war that Andy definitely didn't want to be a part of. Nick, of course, did. So we're passing shit back and forth the whole fucking time to the point that at the end, not the end, at some point, like 45 minutes in, Nick literally just tries to send over an empty <laughs> hot dog box <laughs> to Andy. <laughs> and poor Gia has to fucking hand it to Andy, and Andy's just like, "No, thank you. Like, I don't want it." And she's no. like, "I, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want this garbage." I have to, I have to stop you right there because Gia, mm-hmm. Gia taught me something that day that I didn't know. I, I had, I had prior to this hypothesized could happen, but she taught me it's actually could happen. I went up before you guys got there to get my snack snacks, and. I was like, hey, man, can I get a hot dog? The guy's like, yeah. He's like, do you want anything else? I was like, well, giant Diet Coke. And you know what? Throw in like a a small popcorn. I just want whatever the smallest popcorn is you have. 
And I even said the word, kids popcorn. And the guy's like, no problem. Brings me over what back in the 80s, Greg, would have been a fucking extra large popcorn, of course. I'm like, sure, I don't want that much sure. popcorn. I'm going I'm to make, because I can't stop eating it and I'm going to get sick. I'm going to feel gross at the end of the movie. But how good pop- does it feel when you put it aside and then you come back to it later? Because that's what happened to me in my empty theater, oh, where I got myself okay. the m- largest popcorn and I had fucking at least half of that thing down before Morbius was even a vampire. And I was like, I got to put it over here. I put it on the chair. Then, <laughs> let me just spoil it, he becomes a vampire later in that movie. I was like, I was like, what yeah, popcorn? It, it was now there. Now it's getting interesting. So flash forward, we're walking into the theater and I look over. I was like, Gia, what? where did you get that tiny little bag of popcorn? She goes, oh, I said kids. And then he, I, and I was like, well, how did, why did you get the kids popcorn? She goes, well, he reached for the big popcorn that you got. And I yeah. said, uh, 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 kids. And the guy was like, all right, and brought her a kid's popcorn. So it turns out it's on the secret like, menu. I didn't know. I'm mean, like, dude, I knew they had kid's popcorn. But I was like, so kids popcorn. the lesson you learned from Gia was just to pay attention to people who are serving. <laughs> well, OK, here's what really happened. <laughs> you, okay. you, I, I appreciate well, I appreciate I appreciate really You said that you when Gia, where did you get that small popcorn? She's like, oh, there's a small popcorn vendor outside. She got at the fucking concession stand. No, but here's what happened. The knuckleheads that work behind at, at the concession stand at the Metreon kept talking shit about one of their employees the entire time. We weren't even paying attention to it. Like, hey, man, did you hear what happened about Jay? No, what happened? Dude, you left with that dude his closing duties. Man, fuck Jay. He always does that. Jay's they were just saying that back and forth to the point where I was like, I think I don't like Jay either. Give so me my we, fucking popcorn. Me, G, and Cool Greg walk in, and Nick's telling us the story. He's like, yeah, they're all talking shit about Jay. Cool, oh, Greg, God. ready to fucking throw ones. He's like, y'all talking shit about Jay-Z. This is not okay in my no, house. And Nick no. had to explain, no. We no, can, we can, one of we can de-escalate yeah. the situation right here. But anyways, I mean, yeah, fair, that was I did not, what we were dealing with. I did not verify that it wasn't Jay-Z they were talking shit about, but Jay-Z, I'm pretty sure Jay-Z, Jay-Z does do not his, work uh, at the Metro Concession stand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This movie had a budget of $75 million, which is very, very low for a superhero movie of this sort. Um, it had a box office so far of $5.7 million in Thursday night previews, which is uh, being referred to as very promising. Um, it is looking at a 33 to $40 million plus opening weekend, um, which I'm sure Sony is absolutely thrilled about. And many, 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 many people out there are not um <laughs> let's see what else i have to say about this oh you know favorite. what i want to do you know what i want to do kev are you listening yep what's up the one thing that i want you to be totally up on so you can have actual mm-hmm. context mm-hmm. for what's going on in the future when we're given the plot for the movie you can totally turn out tune out doesn't matter at all i want to start with the post credits, because I think that that is oh, the geez, most like ridiculously yeah. egregious, thing the of most all time. egregious, horrible thing in this movie. <laughs> yeah. So what I want to do is I want to actually just uh, explain exactly what happens and read a transcript, like word for word, of what was said, Kevin, so you can understand oh, what we yeah, witnessed. Yeah, I'm excited. To okay. This. Can you send me this transcript and I can play one of the other characters? Uh, yes, I can. Yes, okay. I can. Thank Let's you. see. I'm gonna give you. Yeah, give me give me a character you feel like embodies me and who my personality. Give us something he can nail, yeah. 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 I, I guess I will let you be um you can be Michael Morbius himself, okay? Oh okay, wow, fantastic. man, the fucking fantastic. titular role, Andy. Yes, <laughs> yeah, don't big crumple me. under the pressure, <laughs> big time is... voice actor from Camp Camp, you know what I'm saying? All right, I forgot you did a role somewhere. <laughs> Nobody All right, guys. There. So Kevin. The movie happens, right? We sit through it all, and then it ends. And then the credits hit. And all of a sudden, it's like super, super, super dope credits that are like neon pink and blue, and they're hella cool. And it's like, this has nothing to do with the movie. Why did they go with this art style? It's super so dope. fucking yeah. weird. So, so out of nowhere. Dope. Yeah. Then we get post-credit number one out of two, okay? We see the purple cracks in mm-hmm. the sky from the end of No Way Home. And it's like, oh, shit. They're, they're tying this to MCU proper proper. We then see the outside of a random prison cell and through the little crack, the little mailbox <laughs> looking thing, right? Yeah, we yeah. see yellow lights flashing, similar to when Venom got sucked into the MCU at the end of Venom, Let There Be Carnage. But then Michael Keaton shows up in the same outfit that he was wearing at the end of uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, the little prison cell outfit, and he's in this other prison cell. And then he looks at a mirror. First off, do they have mirrors in prison? Glass yeah, probably. Yeah, I, sure I, I don't think that they're glass. I think that they're just polished metal. Yeah, they're like a reflective okay. surface of some okay. sort. Because I thought that was just a bad call. But anyways, well, he looks in the idea. mirror. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he says one thing and one thing only. I hope the food is better in this joint. 
This man just got transported realities. And the first thing he says is, I hope the food is better in this joint. Mm -hmm. We then cut to my favorite no, thing. But he says that, Tim, after like, give himself a look down as if, look down. As if he's here? a different looking human being now. As if mm -hmm. Michael Keaton suddenly has like long hair and in this multiverse maybe he grew a goatee of some sort he kind of gives himself like a huh i like this new look it's a very weird it's a weird thing weird thing yeah yeah and just to, to note for the 10th time any scene of adrian tombs that we saw in the trailers for morbius were not in this movie or the post credit scenes at all these are completely new scenes that they shot after no way home so they knew what they were doing with this, everybody. Mm -hmm. So he looks in the mirror and he says, I hope the food is better in this joint. We then cut to a news story. That's just the TV of a news story being told. A bizarre story developing at the Manhattan Detention Center where a man identifying himself as Adrian Toomes simply appeared in an otherwise empty cell. A hearing has been set, which could likely lead to his immediate release. Right. Mm -hmm. What? The okay. actual hell like, first off, this giant purple things in the sky and the Statue of Liberty fight and all the blah, 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 the stuff that happened in No Way Home. And the, the news story is talking about this dude showing up in a prison cell and just being let out. Nobody noticed sure, guys. They don't know, the, sure. they don't know about, they don't know about the, uh, the Statue of Liberty fight. They just know that the purple sky thing happened. Wait, I'm confused. What world is this happening in? Yeah, I don't. I thought that was that was a question. I like, was it, this, was this if this the, is happening in Morbius world and Andrian Tombs. Adrian Toomes got call. teleported to Morbius. Yeah, no, no. Land. We're in Morbius call. world. Adrian uh, right, Toomes right. in this universe. Confused. I think Tim was in this universe that, right? is Venom's universe. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. So that, that, yeah, you're right, you're right. So you're sucked out of that. That does make sense then that the top story was not the, uh, the purple in the sky because that was a different universe. We then get more credits and then we get this post-credit scene number two. We got Morbius in a dope-ass Porsche. Ain't that right, Nick? Oh, it was a sick Porsche. Yeah, it was a Taycan, I think. Bernardo Gray, Beautiful. love it. Then he goes to a random seclu secluded place in the middle of nowhere. It's nighttime. It's very, very dark. And he like looks at his watch, which is a key plot point of the movie. Doesn't matter. All of a sudden, Vulture comes flying in in his suit. Mm -hmm. It's a slightly redone version of his homecoming suit, mm -hmm. but it's in his full ass fucking Vulture suit. And he dramatically flies in. And Andy, here's where I need you. Mm -hmm. He says, thanks for meeting me, Doc. I've been reading about you. I'm listening. I'm not sure how I got here. Has to do with Spider-Man, I think. I'm still figuring this place out. But I think a bunch of guys like us should team up. Do some good. Intriguing. That's the end. Credits. Mm -hmm. And that's Oh, my God. The the Sinister Six is, six is going to be good in this universe, huh? No. No, but he doesn't Kevin, mean The do thing some about good. it is, like, no. when Vulture flies in this time and lands, he never takes off his mask. So it's mm -hmm. clearly just like, you know, they couldn't get Michael Keaton for this shot. There's a shot and no. one shots. It's just the most awkward, fucking horrible thing of all time. It is the worst line delivery I've heard in a long time. Like, People Michael Keaton. At this is like Michael Keaton. You you might want to consider leaving the industry permanently after this line delivery. This is some terrible fucking acting. It was it was people give so much <laughs> when WWE 2K22 came out this year. They were giving shit to Edge, making it sound like he used a Logitech webcam to record his lines. This is the exact same thing where Michael mm -hmm. Keaton was on a cell phone driving his car. Could and they're like, we need you to been, say this. Couldn't have been a Michael Keaton sound alike. No, impossible. Michael no, it, it's that. it's confirmed it was Michael Keaton. These were reshoots that happened recently to put this in the fucking movie. I cannot believe it. And I just want to say, Kev, if this wasn't clear, they are now implying that the way that the spell works in No Way Home randomly took just the vulture out of the MCU and uh, put him in here. Now, the one Daniel Esposito, was that an Esposito? What's his last name? The director? Espinoza. 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 He said it could be other people. Because if you remember, the news about this was the damage control he did with Cinema Blend. That when this thing got screened and everybody hated it, he, they then went out and ruined the post credit scene on March 25th, where he was like, at the end of Venom, let there be carnage in Spider Man No Way Home. And in No Way Home itself, it is clearly established that it is possible for characters to transfer from one multiverse to another. The events of No Way Home had the effect of transferring Venom and Vulture, parentheses, and maybe others, back and forth between the MCU and the Venom universe. They're just making shit up on the fly like oh, they yeah. are. This, yes. They're, they're not doing like... it without any sort of guidance or anything. They just they went to go watch No Way Home and they're like, guys, we got to get on this shit. And like they're doing it without. It's almost like this is an unlicensed film. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, this this 
this re- like seems to me like the, the relationship only... between Marvel and and Sony seems like Big Brother Little Brother, where your little brother has a secret, like he catches you sneaking in late, and he's like, "I'm gonna tell mom and dad unless you let me do whatever I want." You know what I mean? It's like yeah. it's like weird extortion. Like they're <laughs> it just seems so fucking weird. If only there was a way to fight back. <laughs> there is none, Kevin. We have to see these movies because Kevin, it's our job to see to them my, and warn the world. Getting back to my original point, the funniest thing that happened, Tim, thanks for remembering, mm-hmm. was that mm-hmm. at one point, uh, Matt Smith is the character's name. Is the actor's name? Is that his name? Mm-hmm. The guy that played that, yeah. Uh, 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 just dances <laughs> for a while, shirtless. And I laughed so hard, <laughs> not at the screen, but because I'm like, I know Tim knows I'm going to look at him. Yeah. And I know Tim's expecting it. And yeah. I'd be, I would be shocked if Tim wasn't looking at me, expecting yeah. me to look at him. And as I looked over, I just he locked eyes with me. Lock Tim eyes. At me. <laughs> <laughs> we both fucking knew. Now, I have a question for everybody because I'm not so watching bad. this movie again. But if anyone watches this, I need them to confirm to me. While Matt Smith is dancing around the room for way too long, is the song in fact saying, gotta have sex? Yeah. Yeah, no, it gotta is. Gotta have sex. <laughs> What? I think there's, no. he, he, there's like a, another line that sounds like that, but isn't that? But definitely one of them is I gotta have sex or some shit like that. Holy hell, everybody! Well, watched, all right, yeah, go for it, Nick. What were you well, saying? They watched Moon Knight and they were like, "Oh, that's really cool." That Moon Knight has all those like wake up songs and like gets super relevant to the themes of the. Of the, the but what about <laughs> gotta have sex? That's what these guys would want to do. <laughs> hey man, he's sex. finally he's finally healed and he wants to get out there and do vampire he shit. Wants I respect the bone. it. Hmm. All right, let's start with you, Nick. What do you think of Morbius as a film? Um, so I, I, I think to speak positively of it, I liked the first twenty minutes. I was like, oh, I'm kind of digging this, and I think that, you know, you had some really good actors in the first few minutes of this movie. Jared Leto, and I think um, now I'm blanking on her name. I looked it up. Was it Issa Gonzalez? Is that her name? Uh, no, a- Adria Arjona. Yeah, got the wrong one. Uh, yeah, the one that plays that the his Martin Bancroft. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Arjona. Arjona. Got uh, it. Uh, I like their chemistry. I thought they had a good relationship. I, I like the setup of this movie. Um, it's just once he becomes Morbius, I lose all interest. And I don't understand how you make a movie that's two hours of of vampires kind of fighting each other. And it mm-hmm. and it just was just kind of felt flat. I just don't. Yeah, I just I got nothing really to say other than you really don't ever need to see this movie. There's not a lot uh, here except actually. No, I'm sorry, Tim. I'll take that back. Please You're see allowed. this movie if for no other reason than you can watch the most miscast FBI agents you'll ever see in your life. <laughs> Holy hell! Tyrese, I swear to God, I think Tyrese owed someone money or owed someone a favor, and they just got him in for like a day. He literally feels like he doesn't want to be in this movie. And then uh, his counterpart is this zany comic relief, relief dude yeah. that just was so unbelievably out of place. He was funny, but not for this movie. Um, yeah, I think the movie Nick, sorry, just to let you know, just so you can rest assured, Gibson has signed a three picture deal uh, when Excellent. he joined the film. That's great. That's great. Now he's got to come, you know, they were already talking about the SF stuff, right? So the next Venom, he can cross over there too and go chase that. Oh, I'm, I'm super excited about that. And it was cool too, because when you, you know, Greg, when you write, like, you know, characters like that, like FBI agents sure. into the movie. You want to make sure that, I mean, they're there for a reason, which is to heighten the sort of tension of the film, right? You up the stakes because at any point they could figure out this guy's a vampire and then what the hell are they going to do? Dude, so don't even super- get me fucking <laughs> so started. Like, nobody can stop him. Here- <laughs> All right. So, like, there's <laughs> so much happening in this movie, but then also nothing happening in this movie. And so on the one hand, I can kind of appreciate that when you look at the Daily Bugle, it's talking about Rhino. It's talking about Chameleon. It's like supervillains exist in this universe. Okay. I still could use just a little bit more of, man, all the blood sucked. It's a vampire we're fighting. Like, no one's like, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> There's like, all right, yeah, it's a vampire. And then, yeah, Morbius fucking flies up 25 flights of stairs, just straight up. And the dude's shooting at him. And Tyrese's like, stop shooting. Run up there and get him. Yeah. And they Tyrese's run up like, there and he's there. And he, Tyrese draws the gun and Morbius stands down. It's like, weird. what? It's what are you fighting? Then they put him in cuffs. They take him to jail. They leave his watch on. And he, this, oh man, the six hour thing just went off. He got processed and put in to county lockup six hours he's gonna talk to a lawyer he's gonna all this shit i'm like what the fuck is going on it was it was that was my that was my favorite part where he go he literally vampires up 
th- that that like thirty flights of stairs, and Tyrese is like, "No, we don't know if this is the guy." Or not. <laughs> we like stop <laughs> shooting at him. And again, it's like <laughs> these would be the real world ramifications of if you had fucking batshit crazy super villain shit happening all the time. Yeah. But again, a line, a th- some kind of dialogue in there, and I know they're like, "Well, we don't know what Spider Man universe. Maybe it's not a Spider Man universe. Well, whatever, whatever the fuck they're doing, and they know about Venom and whatever. Sure, but still." Give the give the viewer a little bit of like a hey, this is what's going on. This is what's yeah. ha- this is why they're well, not having normal human being reactions to fighting a fucking vampire. The yeah. vampire's face, the man's face changes into a vampire while you're interrogating him, and you're literally like, "All right, let's go." This yeah. guy's this Joker's not going to tell us anything. This put him tough, back, this, this put him back out there with the normal guys. Yeah. Put, put him back, back out, out there with the normal pop, people. Gen pop. Um, yeah, this movie, it's unfortunate. It's just kind of a waste of, of resources. Um, and it was, you know, there's some good stuff. And I think, I think some of the, the set pieces were nice. Like I, I thought Jared Leto did a decent enough job kind of getting through this. Um, but I just feel like there's, there's no stakes in the film. I don't really care about, um, uh-huh. his, you know, hey, thank you. Yeah. Um, I don't really care about his relationship to, to, to Milo. And I, I just don't care who Brothers. wants to fight at the end. And by the end of it, it kind of just wore me out. I'm like, I just want this to kind of end. Um, contrast that to like a movie like Blade where, you know, they handled the vampires in a, in a comic book movie so much better because Blade was just always outnumbered. And granted, he was a badass and he could walk in the day, which was his advantage. But, you know, you, you felt like he was in danger. But at no point do I ever feel like Morbius isn't really in danger in this movie. Um, and I don't really, you know, by the end of it, I'm like, I just I, I just want this to end and I want to slog through whatever the credits are. And I'm just hoping by like minute like 140 that there's not a, an end credit sequence so we can just get up and leave. Andy Cortez. Um, I was kind of like, eh, this movie's boring, but not in any way offensive. And I think until we get to that jail cell sequence, that's when it goes downhill uh, drastically, like violently. Because <laughs> uh, up until then, I'm like, there's, you know, it, look, there's there's bad writing. There's some choices that characters make where you kind of scratch your head and go, why, what, why are we choosing this line of dialogue? Why are we choosing this? And it's largely like just story decisions and decisions made by the directors and the writers. Um, but overall, like nothing on the scale of a Venom. Uh, in most of those moments, I'm just like rolling, rolling my eyes, just wanting to leave immediately. Um, but until we get to that sequence, that's when it goes downhill pretty quickly. This movie to me, this movie feels to me like a series of deleted scenes that belong in a movie that you wish you never watched. It just keeps on going and it feels more and more useless the longer it keeps on going. I I I got a new segment by the way. Oh, Kim 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 Hey everybody, this is a uh podcast within a podcast talking about how characters have terrible chemistry. You thought that Toby Maguire and uh, Kirsten Dunst were bad in Spider-Man. Let me tell you about Tyrese and Al Madrigal that uh, Nick was mentioning earlier. I I told Tim immediately the first vibe I got, and I and I think Greg will really appreciate this comparison. It's like whenever this Al guy is in the scene, he really reminds me of when content creators green screen themselves into serious yeah. movie yeah. scenes. Yes, yes, you're he, nailing it. Never even fe- it never even feels like Tyrese knows he's there. And if you told me he was green screen, I'd go, well, that's Oh my where god, what an amazing went. edit that will be that when somebody deletes him and it's just like Tyrese doing the normal things. Cause they're you're right, it does kind of sound like he exists in Tyrese's head or he's a ghost, like, like where he's like the secure <laughs> like first off, when the cops have to be like there's they've already set up everything. There's murder drain bodies, there's like little <laughs> evidence cards and people doing it, and they're like, Give us the room. CCTV. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'll go get the footage. <laughs> God it's, forbid you do anything or whatever he says. Yeah, it's like about. every line he says just feels like I don't know. It's 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 all poor. It's all really really badly done. And again, every scene that he's in, really, gar, uh, holy water. Oh, you got to be careful, man. You never know. It's like I didn't hear any. <laughs> I didn't hear anybody laugh at any point in this oh. movie in a legitimate way. Yeah. If anything, say, we were. Laugh. We were scoffing at just the the horrible things happening on screen. Um, yeah, I think this movie is absolutely just just shit. This movie is pretty terrible, and I wouldn't recommend anybody watch it. 
I think the thing that people get out of Venom where they're like, look, it's terrible, but at least it's fun. I'm not the type. I'm not like that with Venom. I'm usually like that with a lot of bad action movies. Uh, mm. Venom, I can't I can't reach that point. And it's usually because I I just feel like, man, this would be so much cooler if handled by MCU. With Morbius, I couldn't give a lesser shit. And um, it's one of those movies that just it isn't even fun in any way. It's just really, really, really boring. And it's another one of those. We're going to have the main character fight another version version yeah, of himself. God, but it's but it's that. like. But when Marvel does that, it's usually like still a decent movie. And here it yeah. is just it's terrible in every way. Um, yeah, well, when Marvel movie. does it, it's usually the worst part of that movie. Yeah, right? exactly. Whereas with this, it's yeah. just uh, added on movie. more shit. Yeah. Uh, I, I, let's let's fix. Also, let's go back. Here's the Morbius cut. I want Tim. Mm-hmm. Don't do the bat nose, the Michael Jackson yeah, nose. Gosh, don't, do don't do that. Do that. Don't it makes it look it makes it look weird. really stupid. Like it, these characters look. You're already trying to make him look super emaciated and you're you're giving them this sort of evil, scary uh, look to them. But the bat nose uh, kind of like receding into their face, almost like a human skeleton thing. It just looks even dumber. It doesn't make these characters. These these could look like cool vampire characters. Also, the blur that they leave off their body. I, I what? Well, here's my problem with it. Here's my problem with the blur. They Please leave off me. their body. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We see the blur kind of happen as he's running around the room. I'm like, oh, that's kind of like these wisps of smoke, almost like Nightcrawler, right? Yeah. Uh, we see him training and kind of figuring out his powers. And it's like, that's a that's a cool effect, right? Like, this would be a lot less interesting to look at without that. Um, but then he goes into echolocation mode and he throws the apple around and the apple has the smoke effect on it. And everything has the smoke effect. So it's like, so you don't so we're seeing it how you look or is this how it is in like are other people seeing the smoke effects or is it just how you look because in your echolocation view everything has the wisps of smoke right yeah but then you do when you're jumping and thank god you had a purple one at the end because that was cool looking yeah, was but cool. that's, was, that's about yeah. it that's, that's cool. about it yeah. i love that by the way they were like we how do they were like sitting they sat down and they said how are we going to introduce the echolocation in a really cool way and the other guy was like we are not getting paid anymore. Just throw it in the fucking script. So he's like, yeah, have him explain have it and literally go echo location. If you're not a million, which right? if you've ever heard of a bat course, radar, you, yeah, bat radar, which that of is, course this works nothing death. like that where it's like no. literally uh, he has his, his echo location is super hearing that rivals Superman in every respect. Mm-hmm. Where literally he's like at the end of the movie to track them down, right? Just goes Gink, and immediately hears them immediately hears their entire conversation He's just in tune to hear them through a million buildings to get over. It's like, what the fuck is going yeah, on? Yeah, it's it's weird. I mean, one of the things, and this is going to be another Nick weird thing, I'm sure. But one of the hey, things that really... it's st- Nick weird thing. There it is. Uh, it was the ear effect they did. Oh, like so the gross. The inside of a mushroom. I'm like, why the fuck are you making me look at that all the time? There's nothing cool about this character. It's kind of just grotesque the entire time. I don't know. Even the eyes, when he did the echolocation, I was like, this looks like it's a horror film. But somehow I'm supposed to empathize and cheer for one of the monsters. And I think it's just that's such a hard thing for a writer to do in general. And I just don't think these guys nailed it at all. I would have preferred this story if Morbius was a bad guy, like similar to like Doc Ock was in Spider-Man 2, where he's just misunderstood and kind of dealing with this thing that's happened to him. And Spider-Man has to fight him, but also help him back, you know, come back. So I guess similar to how they did it in, uh, in No Way Home. But instead... Man, they just keep randomly throwing these 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 broken characters and try to make me care about them. I'm like, man, we get we get 45 minutes in. I'm like, I'm staring at this guy's mushroom ear. What the fuck am I doing with my life? Greg Miller. My my thing would be they throw these characters in and you tell them, or Nick, you say if they throw these characters in and make us try to care about them, I would respond with, do they? Because my <laughs> summation of Morbius is, it is quite possibly the most two-dimensional film I've ever seen where it literally is like, this is happening. That's the next thing we're doing this. That's the thing. Blah, blah, blah. Da, da, da. For Morbius, there's like, he, at one point, like it talks, I mean, he talks it, you know, he doesn't want to eat the blood or whatever. And he won't cross that line. But even when he, when he finds that's finally brought up more and he's like, I won't do it. Like the, I won't have the red. Like it's not really this big moment for him. And he hasn't really struggled with it at any point in this thing. These are all things that are just happening and they're all just happening in sequence and we're going along for it. And so like 
I think like the perfect example of this is him and Bancroft in the coffee shop. He's like, all right, cool. I'm going to need your, you get some things from the lab or whatever. Then we get this weird gross ass fucking mushroom ear of these people trying to pass off bad $100 bills. <laughs> <laughs> and the woman marks, and like, I won't take this. And he's like, what about another one? And she's like, no. And then like, what about no. another one? Just like, go, and then okay. Morbius here's all this. She's like, what do you, what? And Bancroft's like, what's going on? And you got that look. He's like, I do have that look. I'll get the things. I'll talk to you later. But and like, so Morbius leaves, and I'm like, okay. Are we doing the lethal protector thing here from Venom? He's gonna he's gonna be a vigilante or whatever. No, it's that Morbius heard this conversation about counterfeit one hundred dollar bills and was like, "Oh, they're making these somewhere in a lab, and I need a lab, so I will follow them down and take over the lab." But Morbius at no point told us this, told Bancroft this, did any of this. We are not included in his needs and desires. This seems like Nick film writing 101 to let us know the motivations of the characters. But instead, we're just along for the ride for him to get there and break every bone in this man's hand and then repurpose a 100, a counterfeit machine to be a centrifuge. That was what I was going to ask Kevin because Kevin knows a lot about sciencey stuff and medicine stuff. Do science, think- science, science with Kev. Kevin, clear your mind. Kevin, clear your mind if you're still there. Blink twice in the in the, in the Discord if you're still there. Okay, uh, cool. I'm here. I'm here. I heard. It. So, Kevin, do you think that you could take an underground counterfeiting printing press and turn it into a quasi I don't know chemistry lab where you can synthesize blood? <laughs> Uh, I mean, does does he have access to all his money? Uh, no, he has no money. He has a cat. Uh, I don't hey, know. Man. I guess that'd be hard. Is he? A, is it was he a weird. A <laughs> yeah. Here's it, the it thing. Felt, it felt Carl, he's a doctor. And honestly, Tony, I think Tony Stark built a, a suit in a around the a world with a box. That's true. Um, box I great that part. That part kind of stuck out to me too because I was like, oh, they're gonna actually yeah, have great. this character do something redeemable for once. Yeah. This guy's going to start a fight and he's going to show Bancroft that he's actually a good person even though she just for whatever reason believes that he's a good person even though she saw him murder a whole boat of Now granted we called them mercenaries guys. but at least one of these guys had to have a family, right? Like at least one of these guys was like, I don't know man, I just needed a gig and it seems like a pretty up and up job protecting these people who they seem like nice people. They're two doctors from America. I read this guy almost won the fucking Nobel Peace Prize, so I'm just going to take this job helping protect this guy do his science experiment and then they all anyway, long story short, give me something to like make me emp- like like this character a little bit. I thought we were going to get an actual superhero moment here where he stops so, the robbery, but you don't get uh, that. Okay, no, but here's the thing. Like, this is one of those situations where the dumber decision to be made would have been the one that is, like, less good in a way. And what I mean by that is, like, I had the same thought, Greg. I was like, well, are we just kind of, like totally taking a u-turn and he's gonna go save he's gonna go take down these criminals because he just wants to stop crime like what the f- what kind of decision are we making right now and it turns out it was for it was to service the plot it was to you know um build blood for himself and get like exactly what he needs but in a way like that's dumber <laughs> and, and it's it's wild to me that like we see that oh this is to service the actual movie it's not just some dumbass mm-hmm. thing that he's gonna go stop a crime or a robbery or whatever this but, is to like continue his consumption of blood but you still go this is still stupid as fuck you know but like then every- they sh- but then they show him in his lab later <laughs> so you're like wait did you just have gone back? i guess the police were looking for him there but they should they literally go back to his lab later to like synthesize the the lead poisoning thing that's gonna kill, which I thought was gonna be a huge moment, and they just he just stabs him with it. Just farts it out, yeah. It's but it's so yeah, it's just how this movie is. Everything's at face value. And it's just things that happen at face value. When we're and you're just told and that's the end of it. You know, the, all right, Milo's rich. Okay, whatever, I guess that makes sense. All right, cool. Um, when Milo confronts Bancroft at the thing where she's trying to get uh the stuff for Morbius, right? She can slow her heart down. She can slow her heart down and not lie. She can, she can control her heart and not lie. Makes sense. Oh, because they okay, had that. I guess. Remember, because they had that conversation where he's like, I can hear your heart. And it was a touching moment. Oh, wait. I don't think they did. I no, they, yeah, she moment. didn't say, like, yeah, I've been training all my life to do this. It's the same. Yeah. Morbius, like, you know, before he even becomes a vampire, right? Where she's like, 
man, you're studying bats. Like, how'd you know my code or whatever? And at one point you see a dude walk by the giant Florida seal wheeling, seal windows while he's got the bat tube lit up. Like, it's like, what do you, what do you think you're hiding here? Like you don't even have, at one point he makes the point of like privacy shades. They weren't up. I can see no. a man right there. Like, what, is, what are we doing? Uh, yeah. Very strange, very strange choices. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Greg. Like, it is such a a 2D flat film, and it is it's weird. Like, I think that any positives that I have for it throughout the movie, all of those positives end up being negatives by the end. I thought the in the same way that I think it was Nick and Andy were kind of saying in the beginning, I was like, oh shit, this isn't going to be, be cool. that bad. And then there is a turning point where, and I, the thing about the turning point is, I don't think it's a moment. I think that it's a slow burn of all the different factors, kind of eventually hitting the point where it's like, okay, I can't look past this anymore. Like this is just bad. In the beginning parts, I like the visual effects, and I, I overall did like the looks of the puffy smoke and the colored stuff. And I liked Jared Leto's look. I really didn't like Matt Smith's look, and the fact that they both were the same thing is just like, guys, we are so far past this in superhero movies that. I can't believe that they're making this choice uh, this late into the game, but they did. Um, but I do think that all the positives I just said by the end of it is just nonsense because what Andy was saying is there's no consistency to when the smoke happens, why the smoke happens, like what it's interacting with. And the final fight scene is an act against God. What the fuck is going on here? It is just like random colors. Like we always bitch about like, oh, it's CG nonsense going on. This might be the most egregious example of it I have ever seen. And it's them flying through the skies in ways that are just like, all right, this is loud and noisy and they had to make him purple. So at least we had different colors to kind mm -hmm. of understand what's going on. We eventually make it into the sewers where he summons a shit ton of bats. Mm -hmm. And it's at this point that I'm like, all right, any single rule this movie seems to have set up, they contradict at some point. And we talk about how it's boring to see the same, like the hero, hero, I guess, whatever, the main character and the antagonist kind of, face each other when they have the same powers mm -hmm. but at least most the mcu movies and most superhero movies in general even the dc ones will do a good job of explaining why the antagonist has the the one up on our hero this movie does the opposite we have morbius who's doing trials doing tests on all of the different types of um the the blood what's happening to him all of that he starts to learn about the the bat radar and all this shit Matt Smith doesn't do shit. He just fucking is better than him in every single way. And then we get the scene where Morbius to learns to fly. And yeah. Greg, Greg mocked it earlier for good reason. There's a good 10 minutes of cutting back and forth between Matt Smith and Morbius walking with the subway. And one of the only things we didn't see Morbius test in his lab was this flight thing. And all of a sudden, he gets this bright idea to just jump in front of a fucking subway. Well, he kind of had it from when he almost got away from Tyrese. You know yeah. what I mean? No. When he got up there, he no. started He started drifting. No. He knew something was wrong. He didn't do it, but he... he no. He, it's no. a lot like... You see, it's a little bit smarter than I think you're giving it credit for. It's a lot like in, you know, Spider-Verse, right? When Miles jumps off and the glass breaks, he took a leap of faith, right? He wasn't sure he'd make it. When we got up there and he got to the thing and he did the weird... <laughs> and then he came back up. That was him not believing in himself, but now he believed in himself. Because he could bat. see the wind draft, and he was like, this could be a thing, but I don't know if it's really a thing. So my stance on it is that was telling the audience that. It wasn't so much telling him it. He was just kind of getting blown away. And he's like, whoa, shit. And then Tyrese is there with a gun. Then we see him jump in front of a subway train, and he's now a pro at this wing gliding shit. He is weaving it. He didn't need to go to the other side, uh, to oncoming traffic. He didn't need to do that, but he did. Why didn't Matt Smith do the same thing? We were taught that Matt Smith's just better than him and could just be like, fuck it, I'm a better, better vampire than you. Instead, you know, he's way better at dancing. Instead, it's just, no, he just fucking fly, like, lets him go at that point. And it's like, this is such damn yeah. nonsense. I believe I mean, if we want to go to the sacred texts and mm -hmm. look at vampires throughout history, Twilight establishes that vampires get individual special abilities. Not everybody mm -hmm. has the same special ability. Because uh, yeah. that not, one woman who cheated on Taylor Swift's boyfriend, like, she she had the, she could see shit in time, right? In the, in the future, know. in the past, whatever. Not all of them, Kevin? Yeah, it's, it's just level. some of them. It's just so crazy. some of well, but you're with me that and they all get different powers. I think True Blood might have done a little yeah. bit of this, but I don't Tim, remember either. I th I'll disagree with you a little bit. I think I think they were trying to set up that Matt Who that Matt Smith's character was a little bit more powerful because he was drinking blood, 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 yeah. as opposed to the synth, uh, the, the blue blood stuff. Which that's not what I'm saying. There's nothing to disagree with. Yes, he's more powerful because he's oh. drinking blood. How oh, okay. does he understand how to do any of this? He's not running tests. He doesn't know the strength of his power. He doesn't. Know, how do they know how to teleport and do all this shit? Like. 
just drinking blood just gives you that. That makes absolutely no sense, especially Tim. In the same how does movie. Toby Maguire Spider Man know how to make webs? Exactly. How, like do they they help? Just like how did they fix Probably the help. Aston Martin in, in no, Tim? I mean, in, I, I'm Bond. with you, Tim. There was no, there was, and, and I think at the heart of it, it's just all that stuff like the learning to use your powers and stuff like that is usually such a fun part of these movies. It just wasn't, it just wasn't, it was just kind of, it kind of fell flat for me. Um, and well, they set it up and then they didn't even use the things that he learned is the yeah. thing that I think sucks besides the, the sonar. But then this movie does the triple down of the egregious bad superhero stuff that they just did wrong in Venom 2, which is all right. Venom had the problem of it's Venom versus another Venom. Right. So what's the sequel? This one was a red one. You know what? It's a red Venom. We're having a red Venom. Mm -hmm. But guess what? They're teasing for the eventual sequel, potentially a third, fourth fucking Venom. Right. Mm -hmm. This movie does the exact same thing. We have Vampire 1 facing Vampire 2. What happens to the girl at the end? Oh, they're teasing a Vampire 3. Nobody wants this. We don't just be a good vampire. Fucking pluff. You can be a cool vampire. Yeah, she'll be fun vampire. She'll, 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 kill, she'll do what everyone does. Thompson's kill the first. Probably gonna be a good, kill, good venom, right? massacre the first time. And then she'll get her powers back. And be like, well, just forget about that. We'll forget about that Michael Morbius fucking decimated an entire boat of people, which is ridiculous. Um, but nobody yeah. can control it their first time. That was also confirmed. That's a problem. I mean, it's exactly like podcasting. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the thing that I think this movie kind of tried to do that I don't think that I think that they, I, I wish they had done better. And I think they were going for it was, was, and I hate to bring it back to blade and man, I'm so fucking excited for the new blade, but to, to look back at the old blade, um, when I was, by the way, I, earlier when I was referencing like blade was outnumbered, I was kind of thinking more along the lines of blade two and blade one, he was a hunter, but the thing that separated him from being able to like hunt everyone was that he had the serum, right? You remember that Greg, if he didn't yeah. have the serum, he would get thirsty for blood and he would turn into one of the things that he was hunting. And I thought that was such a cool conflict that this movie was kind of tried to do, but just didn't do very well because yeah, he just didn't, I don't know. It, it, it was kind of a copycat that just didn't work. Before we move on. Let me tell you about our sponsors. Shout out to Uplift for sponsoring this episode. I've been using my Uplift desk for well over a year now. I love the thing so much, I decided to write a rap song for them. The build quality is real good. It's made of real high quality wood. They didn't ask for it, I just did it anyway. Getting my Uplift desk immediately improved my mood. Whenever I'm on shows, I'm standing up, I'm feeling a lot more energetic. And also, I kind of feel like I was just maybe creating some bad habits sitting down at a desk all day. I would move my legs up, I'd sit underneath my legs on my chair, and eventually all that stuff just created really bad back pain for me. Choose from laminate, whiteboard, bamboo, solid wood, butcher block, or even custom solid wood or laminate options. Uplift Desk won New York Times Wire Cutters Best Standing Desk from 2019 to 2022. And while I'm at it, I'm just gonna give them an award as well. Best Standing Desk that I use in my bedroom from when they sent it to me until now. Uplift Desk have a 15 year warranty. They ship the same day you order with free shipping and free return shipping. So if you've been feeling the effects of sitting at a desk for eight hours a day, maybe Maybe you want some more energy in your life. Maybe you want to do squats in the middle of a Zoom call or something. Uplift your life. Go to kindoffunny.com slash uplift. Greg Miller. Hi. It's your sacred duty to give us the plot. Are we still doing that? I mean, however you want to do it, man. We can do the highlights. We don't have to do the whole. Okay. The beat by beat. Let's go. We got 30 minutes to do the plot. I mean, you know, there's a show and there's the whole thing that we do. We got to do it. Gotta I know, but we usually do it way time. earlier than now. It's been an hour yeah, of us just do. talking about plot, every plot, plot point and yelling plot, about plot, it. Plot, 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 plot. Uh, welcome to Wikipedia, Morbius, Greg. everybody. We start in like Costa Rica or some bullshit, and there's a cave and there's a helicopter, and they land and they're all like, This place fucking sucks after sundown. We shouldn't be here. But the one, the only Jesus Christ superstar, Michael Morbius, Jared Leto's there, and he's like, Don't worry, uh, set up the traps and I'll pay you double money right now, and you can leave whenever the fuck you want to. And he's like, All right. And then he cuts his hand, and they're like, Whoa, with the money, you said you'd let us leave. And then they all run, and the vats come out and they hit the thing. You, Nick, what are you already? <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I have to. This is this is the first part. I was like, that's interesting. They look over, like, we got to get out of here. It's really dangerous. And they see a full fucking like cow that's been eaten alive. And they're like, these bats are just eat anything, right? They'll, eat, they'll eat a whole thing. And I was like, drink. do vampire bats eat meat? I thought they just drank blood. Yeah, they drink blood. So they don't actually eat things, right? Yeah, they, they like in the this, blood, right? In this, Kevin, it looked like they ripped apart like piranhas would. Yeah, yeah they, this thing was like down to like half of that? the skull. Piranha. Like piranha. I think that piranha. they mostly like like cows or like like bigger things. Yeah, but they don't even like you never even know because they have like a thing in their in their saliva that numbs yeah, your foot a little bit. Yeah, it out a little bit. And then they nice. go just a little bit. That was just a little bit. Just a little bit, Tim. Did Did you guys expect that at any point this was going to come back and that vampire bats were going to like destroy something? 
Because I did. Oh no, but that's I had hopes movies so. Because work. as you guys know, everyone's favorite part of any comic book movie is when uh, uh, Bruce Wayne gets lifted up. Young Bruce Wayne gets lifted up by all the bats it's in that one cool light, movie, and everyone loves light. that. I was like, man, if, if every movie could just have that shot, that'd be dude. Fun. How mm-hmm. much did this fucking movie try to do the Dark Knight Inception Hans Zimmer soundtrack? Oh my like, god! I hope I know Tim noticed it, but there were so oh, many yeah. moments of nah, nah, like that sort of like crescendoing triumphant song and they kept on doing it. i was like don't you don't deserve this quit ripping off hans leave him alone man leave hans alone yeah uh so the bats rush out and he's like whoosh, 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 whoosh. and then we go 25 years ago let's go instead from there we will go to don't tell me 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 i can it's a country and i almost have it don't tell me Greece, thanks. I said, don't tell me. Uh, they go to Greece, uh, where like Michael him. Morbius is young, and he's a little punk kid, and he's got his disease, and he's in bed. And then they bring a new kid in to put into bed, and guess who it is? It's Milo. And he's like, my name's not Milo, it's Lucian. He's like, shut the fuck up. Your name's Milo. It's always going to be Milo. Be Milo. <laughs> You're like the 19th Milo. I don't even remember original Milo. Kids come and they die. You're like, oh so my his God. name, his real name is L-O-X-I-A-S. Lucius. Just, I've never even known those letters could be next to each other that way Neither did I, until I heard and so michael morbius is there and guess what him and milo become fast friends and they both have a rare disease and they can't, they have to get blood infusions what is it three times a day they said or whatever they die which it would uh, the, the older i'd get with that i'd be like listen i just it's not i don't know it's not worth it it's not <laughs> leave cars. me alone dude for madman <laughs> you know what i mean i remember you in madman just See, leave me alone my thing greg is i feel like i'd be like you know what it's worth it we got to just stick through and be fine but the moment i look out the window and every single way i turn somebody is bullying me <laughs> i'd be like maybe not this might be like the craziest set of bullies we've seen in a movie in a long damn time man i have expected the doctor to be like well let's get your blood in you little bitch and like slap him in the face <laughs> <Yeah>. or something <laughs> Uh, they don't though they become fast friends uh michael morbius makes little uh origamis and he enjoys that or whatever and then they're chilling. They're, chilling. they're chilling they're having a lot of fun with their blood infusions or whatever being fast friends and then milo's machine goes bad and he falls over and michael's like nurse and like nobody comes because they just do not give a fuck about these kids in what is some kind of weird not orphanage medical facility that just doesn't really give a shit and so michael morbius being the quick thinker and genius he is pops out and undoes the thing and finds a blown fuse and then he takes apart his pen and he uses the spring of the button and connects it and he saves milo's life and so madman doctor comes over and he's like you know michael you're a fucking genius like i need to send you to a place for exceptional youngsters in new york and they'll tr- train you to be a fucking rad ass bad, bad man there and he's like okay cool and then he's like but not cool milo i'll miss you but we'll always be brothers and he's like i know we will i'm milo and so then mm-hmm. uh he leaves him a note in an origami the origami blows out the window milo's like oh no my origami and then so then he goes outside to get the origami but guess what those bullies have it not only do they have it like it's not like he's going to get it like it's up against the gutter it blew out went around the corner and the bullies were like what is this oh my god milo and michael morbius are friends this is funny and so they're making fun of the letter. He comes out and they make fun of him. They won't give him the letter. And so he hits him with the crutch and just knocks one of the kids out. And then the other kid's like, now you fucking die, sick boy. And they fucking get him on the ground. They're pummeling him or whatever. And then Madman Doctor comes around. He chases everybody off. Milo uh, gets up and then he jumps back on the bully and starts pounding him in the face. He's like, no, Milo, no. From there, we jump back to the present where, yeah, it's time for Michael Morbius to accept the Nobel Peace Prize. He's there because of his synthetic blood has saved, you know, the millions of con- trillions of billions of lives. And they're like, this is rad. He solved this blood thing. He hasn't solved his own thing, but he got blood. And so then, you know, they call his name and then we jump back to the hospital in America, in New York. And there's a girl there who's sick with a rare blood thing, just like Michael had. And Michael's there and he's talking to her and he's trying to figure out, you know, like how to help her. And he makes her a little origami thing too. And then Bancroft shows up and she's like, hey, can I borrow you, Michael? And then he's like, and, and, and Michael, and then she, he's like, yeah. And then Bancroft's like, he's in trouble. Ooh. And it turns out that, of course, Michael Morbius rejected the Nobel Peace Prize. He got, he went all the way to Stockholm, Sweden, got up there, got to the podium, and was like, no, I won't take this for a failed experiment. Nick, did they ever cure the girl? No, she she was put into a coma. Remember? He's just throwing the coma. I mean, day. Michael Morbius is working on it. He almost had it with his vampire ship. Um, and so, you know, who does have money, though, Michael, people who they want to give it to Nobel Prize laureates or whatever. And Michael Morbius is like, uh, I'm just kind of aloof. And I'm going to be this. I'm going to be right here. And this this is going to be the range. I'll be the entire movie. All right, I'm Morbius. Even the vampire, a little bit higher, but maybe a little bit sadder. But right here, this is where Morbius right will here. live. I'm Michael Morbius. I'm Michael Morbius. I'm a little aloof. I'm what do you want? Good. 
<laughs> and so Bancroft's like, well, guess what, motherfucker? I know all your passcodes because it's pi reversed. And look at this. You're studying fucking bats. You want to fuck some bats and put their blood into your DNA and make yourself DNA, Batman. And he's like, no, you can't prove that. And she turns on a giant tube. It's full of fucking bats. And she, he's like, me, me, me. Any so attempted like, humor in any of this movie is the hardest I've seen humor flop. Um, even here, like, you could tell they want to do that comedic thing of like oh that could be anything you know like they want to do that because she's like when jerry leto just gives you this it's hard to have that like you're working with bats and there's a billion fucking bats in here and he's like well that could be anything like he tries to do something along those lines and it is just like the biggest flop of all time and so then it's like all right cool well let's keep uh, uh, yeah well the the deal is that i went to costa rica and i got these vampire bats and that the vampire bats are you know they drink blood and they have an anticoagulant in their blood or their mouth and that's the anticoagulants and so they have to worry about it and so i'm gonna take it out of this thing i'm gonna put in this thing now i'm gonna put it in this rat and see what happens they put in the rat and the rat dies like motherfucker and then they're like michael morby the nurse comes in michael morby is your secure facility that i'm not supposed to be able to see you have thousands of bats in uh, right outside the emily girl which is across the hall from your glass office filled Mm -hmm. with bats you don't want people to know about because it's a huge ethical violation right across the hall through the glass the emily girl she's crashing and he runs in there mcgonagall (laughs) (laughs) he runs in there and this girl is just wigging out and he's like we got to induce a coma let's do it so they induce the coma and then you know again across the hall in his glass room full of secrets that would end his career and get him disbarred or whatever his medical license revoked uh Bancroft looks out. She's like, Michael, it worked. And the fucking rat's all chilling. He's like, yeah, we're at, and he's dancing and being sexy. Yeah, what do you got? I'm just like, there's a lot of ways to kind of frame scenes with directing and stuff that you don't need to talk to the audience right in their face and say, here's what's happening because you're a stupid idiot. You're here. Obviously, you're an idiot. And the like, it's just like a weird nitpick I have with it. But like, maybe just look and see that the rat's alive and be like, Michael, and then let's cut to the next sequence. We don't need yeah. her to be like, it worked. And then him look and go, oh my God, it, it did work. work. <laughs> like, we don't need, a, like, there's just, you can kind of snip these things down and be smarter with it. But it, it's a weird thing that I noticed. And it's like, what? Like, we're not that stupid, dude. Go ahead, Nick. I was waiting for the, the, the when they came back after all the shit had gone down, like he turns into Morbius, they come back and the rat cage has been fucking like bursted through. Yeah, right. Dude, totally, man. Like, I was and, and that's that. the, the first I was thing like, I oh. thought. I, I had deja vu, like before it even began, where I'm like, this is exactly the lizard from yeah. Amazing Spider Man, where it's like, yeah. we get the rat, and like, oh, they did it, and oh, fuck, it's turning into a lizard. And then we Ooh. never get that bit. No, I was really hoping that when the director was like, there's some Spider Man stuff in this movie, I was hoping that it was the death animation of the rat from the Spider Man movie transported onto this mm-hmm. alive rat because we mm-hmm. get the death animation of the rat nick where it's the virtual version of it mm-hmm. and it kind of like eh, over like and over the digitized happening. version of it i was I hoping remember. that they just like transfer that animation and that animation rig to this rat and had that and be like ah oh, that's what he was talking about there's the cameo the spider-man cameo instead we are we make it clear that you know we have it and We're going to need some money to make this happen. So we're going to go talk to our friend Milo, who's alive in New York and a doctor from Mad Men. Still goes by Milo. Still goes by Milo. He's very, he has no respect for himself or his family who apparently gave him this wealth. I assume, again, we're not told. Sometimes the movie doesn't tell you things. That got a laugh from me of like, I have to use this to save my best friend Milo. (laughs) That line made me laugh so hard because like we hadn't seen Milo in a while, but we got to remind the audience that his Milo's best friend Milo from earlier in the movie is still alive and well, or not well, but you know, he's still yeah. needs this <laughs> cure. Well. But it, yeah. it was just so funny to be like, like, Michael, you can't use this cure, blah, blah, blah. But my best friend Milo, <laughs> this is Kevin, so poorly done. Kevin, I need you bring, to bring you back into this for a second. Uh, yeah, like I'm just right to make back. this explicitly clear to you. There was a flashback of these kids as young children mm-hmm. between Michael Morbius and this dude that's named Lucius, right? Yeah, I believe so, yes. Yeah, they Lucian. Then, Lucian. Lucian. They make fun of him. Michael Morbius, little Michael Morbius, makes fun of him and calls him Milo because like these kids keep dying and they keep being replaced. He's like, you're like the twelfth Milo. I'm gonna call you Milo. Yeah. And then they flash forward many years, and he just still goes by Milo, not just as a nickname to Morbius, just in his life, he is now Milo. Yeah. Oh. It is <laughs> utterly insane. <laughs> it's bonkers. 
Thank you. Maybe you figured out it was his lucky name, you know? There's nobody alive over the age of 18 named Milo, right? There's no adult named Milo out there. Mm, the only one I was. was kicked off of Twitter. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. They go for a walk. They go for a talk. And it's, listen, I think I'm... I think I'm close to having this done. I think I'm close. To- <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Jen's got a, a couple of workers going around and she's okay, talking gotcha. about what's going on and stuff. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I need some money. Basically, how much money? A lot of money. We're gonna have to go into international waters to do this fucking experiment because it's that outlandish. Even though I'm doing it in a glass room back at the hospital right yeah, now. What? What? What the hell? And, you know, Milo's just like, listen, man, you've always been my best friend since you named me. I was nameless. No one knew who I fucking was. You gave me the name Milo. I love it. I'll give you anything you need. You'll never want for anything. Thank you. We then jump to a tanker ship off the coast of Long Island. Yeah. I I need you. Do you remember what the lower third was? International waters, I think. Because it fucking just said international waters. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it yeah, went yeah, from yeah. them out loud saying, we got to go to international waters. And then yeah. it just cuts international waters. That's how dumb they think you are. Oh, and they're like, laugh. people aren't going to remember that they're in international waters <laughs> to do this super secret thing. Like anyone would draw that comparison. Like anyone, to Greg's earlier point, we'd be like, he's doing this in America. He's going to get arrested. He should really be doing this in international waters where you're just allowed to do anything else. Of course, you need a tanker and all whole set up up there. <laughs> this is whatever. And so, yeah, now they're on a tanker ship, and they've got a bunch of guys playing uh, cards upstairs with their uh, machine guns because International Waters pirates. That makes sense. That checks. And uh, Bancroft and uh, Morbius are down there, and they're running tests, and they're doing things, and they're you know. And finally, he runs one, and it's like success again. It's just success, and he's like trial two hundred and fifty five. It worked. We, we can, now we can move on to human trials, and they're super stoked about it. And so. Then he's like, all right, cool, let's do the human trial order. And they go in there, and he gets on the little cross bed, and they give him the injection. And she's like, you should tie me down. So she ties him down, and she goes out there. And then one of the security guys comes down. He's up for no good already, right? He's down there. He's like, you just hired help like me, blah, 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 in blah, the blah. spine, blah. though. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they inject him. Like, yeah, yeah. And so uh, then, you know, they're talking shit, and they look over, and Morbius isn't strapped to the table anymore. And they're like, what? And so they open it up and go, and they're like, Morbius, Morbius. And then she looks up, and he's hanging up there like a bat. And the guy's like, where is he? And he looks up, and he's hanging like that. And then he's like, oh, my God. And, like, Morbius comes down, and they start shooting, and the sirens go off immediately, and the rest of the guys, he radioed, and come down, guys. And the guys come down, and they run in, and Morbius just fucking people up. And then the girl him gets breaking the down. glass was really cool, I thought. Yeah, like, yeah, him yeah. kind of, like, king, 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 like, ping-ponging off the glass was pretty sick. For sure. I thought him attacking these people was cool. Yeah. Uh, he's slashing them. He's cutting them. He's biting them. He's up in the rafters. He's off the rafters. He's doing his little nightcrawler shit all over the place. Except all the, the, the fucking way too extra slow-mo. Sure. And it's him like, and so like I, all of that stuff. Just we don't. That's not impressive anymore, man. We got to get that out of movies. You got to know that he's powerful. You got to know that he's Morbius. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, well, we'll eventually, he kills everybody, and the, the uh, Bancroft's still knocked out. And he's he comes back to being Michael Morbius. And he comes in there, and he sees it, and he's got blood. And then he watches the security footage of him freaking out and killing people, and he pukes. And then he picks up. He's like, mayday, mayday. I'm 11 miles off the coast of Long Island. I need help. Mayday. And so he does that, and then he just jumps off the fucking boat. He leaves them. Does he then, know he can swim this way? Like, I mean, if he's an Olympic athlete, remember, he says that. He feels like an Olympic athlete. He's, he's juiced up on the red. He knows mm-hmm. he can do anything. Mm-hmm. He feels like Good he can fast. do anything. I've heard it's just like, but at this point, he doesn't know the complications and this sort of setup with the juice. Mm-hmm. So he just voluntarily is like, "All right, this could be it for me." <laughs> like there was no, yeah, there was no was... consequences. There was no sort of discussion as to like with himself being like, "Am I really gonna fucking swim back to land from international waters?" <laughs> it's only eleven mi- nautical miles. That's you could swim that in a day, Andy. No problem. Like, he could probably do that in like a minute because he can exactly. Fly, He's remember. an Olympic athlete. Uh, yeah. So then it's uh, uh, Tyrese and the other comedian guy on the thing. But he can't they're... fly. Hold on, we need to talk about this. He can't fly yet. He doesn't he know swims. that. He doesn't know that. He swims fast though. I didn't think of it. He actually swam. Holy yeah, shit! Yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, but it's fast because it's he moves so fast. It's possible he did like dash in the Incredibles and ran on the water. We're not That's sure. Fair. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This wasn't shown to us. We're not sure. Mm. FBI guys show up. They make a reference to San Francisco. They're like, these guys have all been sucked their blood dry. 
this, that, and the other. It's vampires. It's pretty much vampires. And they're like, oh my shit, it's vampires. That's crazy. And then uh, Bancroft's, uh, you know, she's the only survivor, but she's knocked out and she's at the hospital, so they can't talk to her just yet. But they're like, we'll crack this case. We'll get we'll get to work on this case. Um, I cannot want- state enough how ridiculous these characters are. Yeah. Tyrese and and Al, who, by the way, Andy, in the movie, his name is also Al. Oh, great. He's so the actor I- named Al plays a character named Al, and it is just a lot. It, it is it, it's really bad stuff like it, it's something that I kind of hope gets put on YouTube pretty quickly just so people can see how much I'm not and we're not exaggerating about how terrible they are and just how out of place they're so unnecessary for this whole movie. So more, we get then get back to Morbius, right? I think he, he checks in on her in the hospital Bancroft and then he goes. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what happens. He comes back. He checks in on her, but then goes to his office. That's when he sucks some of the the blue blood. That's when he starts doing all the tests and how long he can go without it and this, that, and the other, and all this other shit, and blah, 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 blah. And uh, he's doing all the tests and examinations and blah, 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 blah. What was the blue blood? The, he made synthetic, synthetic blood. That's what he's getting the Nobel it, Peace it, Prize for. That you know, there's no more. He's That's he's a made true blood situation here. And so uh, he's like, I, I'm gonna keep pushing it and testing it and changing it, and yada yada. And he's like, you know, what I'll do now is see how long I can really go. So he locks himself in the glass cage he has in his glass office, and he's like, I'll sit here and starve myself and do experiments, and I have no real plan for what I'll do at the end here. I'll just either die, I guess, or whatever. Because he, he, exactly. he goes back to being frail and hurt uh, when he hasn't had the blood. And so he does that. And then Milo gets the idea of like, oh, he Milo saw the news, obviously. And that's always helpful. The news tells always him, news, of always news, of course, about yeah. the, the container ship. Um, and Milo's like, huh, okay. And so he goes to the office and he's like, Michael, Michael. And then like he sees Michael in the little glass cage and he's like, oh shit, are you okay? And Michael writes blood on the glass and Milo goes and gets the blue blood and brings that over and Michael drinks that. And then Michael gets up and he's all strong again. And Milo's like, I need this. Give me this. And he's like, no, it's a curse. And he kind of does the vampire face for a while. You have to get out of here. And so Milo leaves. And then Michael goes to the little girl's room, Emily. And he sits there at her bedside and falls asleep. And then the nurse we saw earlier that we like a little bit, I guess, is walking through the hospital. And this hospital, for some reason, has a weird thing where they're like, we really want to save power. And so this hallway will only light the light directly above you. And as soon as you step out of it, that light will turn off. And the next one then will take a second and turn on. And so the woman's walking. Like the refrigerator like, or the <laughs> freezers or the grocery aisle. And then she hears mm. stuff and she looks back and we see the, the Morbius like thing. And then she runs, 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 runs. She hits the big light and all the lights light up. And it's like, oh, man, nothing. And then she kind of senses it. And boom, she gets attacked and taken down to the floor. And it's like, oh, my God. And then we wake up in the room with Morbius, whose watch goes off to indicate the six hours or whatever. And he gets up. He's like, Meh. And then he hears them with his uh, echolocation ears that don't make any sense. Saying, oh, my God, she's been sucked of all her blood. And he comes out there and he's like, oh, did I do this in my sleep? Oh, my God, I don't know. Oh. And he's all freaked out about it. And everybody who watched the movie is like, no, Milo did it. This is pretty clearly Milo, but okay. And, uh, and then he's like, oh. And so at some point, maybe it's here. Maybe it already they had gone. The FBI agents showed up to talk to Bancroft when she was awake. She's eating bad jello. She doesn't want to tell them shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she tells them to take a walk. But in like two seconds, like these are like the – most pushover FBI agents. Like I understand like in the movies where you're tangentially related to a subject and they ask you a couple questions and then you tell them to fuck off and they fuck off because, okay, I have nothing really to do here. We're testing the waters. Like you are the only survivor on this ship. And so like, once you give me one, I don't really remember it. I'd be like, well, start fucking remembering. Cause you're a murder suspect. I don't know how this happened. You know what I mean? All these people are dead. Let's say if you suck their fucking blood, she, but they fuck off pretty quick. So, they fuck off, and then the blood thing happens, and then they're like, well, Michael Morbius is connected to this, right? He's a, he's the fucking Morbius, man. And so Morbius leaves the hospital place he works at. Uh, what's it called? Horizon. And uh, in the lobby, the, the policemen are there. The FBI agents are there. And they're like, oh, hey, Michael Morbius, with your hood up. You don't look super sick. We've seen you on TV, and you're usually really super sick. And he's like, yeah, you know, just been fucking eating my, eating my Cliff Bars. And then what, Tyrese what is say? like, what do they actually say? It, it, it's not this, but it's something like you look plump. No, I don't say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not plump, but there's, there's, you look engorged, or you look. Mm. They say something that it, I'm definitely making it worse than it's it like the opposite was. of emaciated. 
Yeah, and I'm like, what a weird thing to say to somebody in any context, even they're if you think they're, they're a vampire. They're doing it. I mean, they're on it. They're on it. Um, and they're like, yeah, you look, you know, this and that. Well, I'm doing this and the other. Cool, sure, sure. What do you know about boats? He's like, I don't know shit about boats. I'm not. A, I don't have sea legs, as you can see, because he's like, eh. you can't walk, like, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Walk yeah. And they're like, mm, okay, well, that's interesting. You know, that's what, whatever. And more, and then they're like, all right, cool. Well, you know, we should hear some other shit. And then like, while they're, they, he has an earpiece in Tyrese. Oh, Tyrese thanks him too. Cause the, when he was in Afghanistan, Morbius is a uh, fake blood saved him. And he's like, no problem with really, really bad ADR and a completely changed line of dialogue. Um, and I think the actual line may have been something along, along the lines of like, you saved my life. But in the vid, in the movie, he said, you saved my legs or, mm -hmm. or you saved my leg or my arm or I forgot what it was. Cause this is arm, they, I think. Usually when movies want to commit the ADR sin, a character is pretty far away and or maybe their back is turned to the screen and you get a glimpse of what they're saying and it doesn't match up with what is actually being said and being heard. But this is like a full on fucking one shot close up of Tyrese talking and his ADR is totally different from what's being said. Like a couple words are being switched around and I was like, wait, what? That looked really off. What are we doing? Switch to his backside or something. So you're right, Andy, and they did mention the arm there, and there's a reason for this. Uh, and, if, and Tyrese Gibson plays Simon Stroud, an FBI agent hunting Morbius. Gibson noted that the character is white in the comics, and the producers made him black to cast the actor. Stroud has a high-tech weapons-grade arm in the film. And Gibson described him as a superhero. What? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. What? Uh, Tyrese has an <laughs> earpiece in. What point in production was this? <laughs> Tyrese has an earpiece in. And here's, of course, now the call of like, hey, there was a nurse up here who was sucked of all her blood or whatever. And they're like, uh, it's a lot like the droids from Star Wars, right? I'm like, mm, eh, eh, you stop right there. And like, they're like, stop, Morbius. And Morbius like, I can't do that, suckers. And he shoots off. Yeah. And like, he's running and he's doing this <laughs> stuff. And, he, and they're he's like, like, you're the sucker. Whoosh. Yeah, exactly. And this is when they chase him and they might shoot at him a bit. And eventually, yeah, like oh, the cops run in and then he shoots up like 300 flights of stairs or whatever with his uh, amazing vampire powers. And they're like, we'll still chase him on foot. And they get to the top. And yeah, Morbius almost blows away with the wind because, again, he knows so he can sense that something's happened. Well, he can sense it. He can't control it, but he can sense it. And then, yeah, Tyrese runs up there and they, oh, he also threw his bag of blue blood away. And then Morbius gets up there. Oh, I'm sorry, Tyrese gets up there. And he pulls his gun. He's like, it's over. And Morbius like, you know what? It is at this point. Go ahead and handcuff me, even though I'm super strong and can do all this crazy yeah. shit. Why not? And so then we're, you know, Morbius is in lockup. And the alarm goes off, and it's six hours later. And, you know, they come in to investigate him with the holy water and talk to him and yada, yada, yada. And Morbius ain't saying shit. And so then he goes back to his cell where he starts to get really hungry. And then uh, Milo oh, shows up. You won't want to see me when I'm hungry. Yeah, oh right. my yeah, god, yeah. they said it. Oh and my it god. It was so bad. So bad. Don't make oh. me hungry, Kevin. You wouldn't want to see me when I'm hungry. It's a hold <laughs> line, Kevin. Um, so then it's Milo serious. shows up in the cell pretending to be his lawyer and is basically like, hey bro, it's okay. <laughs> we'll get you out of you get you should get out of here at any cost, no matter what, you should get out of here or whatever and he's like no i did my time maybe it's best for me even though i'm clearly just going to become a monster and eat people in here but no this is you know this is what i killed people. i killed those people on the boat oh that was my favorite line too of like where uh the cops when they're interrogating uh mike there in jail are mm -hmm. like listen we don't give a shit about the people on the boat they, they were, were all mercenaries they're all bad guys to begin with but the clearly. nurse that you worked with you for like a decade that's clearly. fucked up that she had a family and he's like i yeah. know i fucking suck they tried I, uh, really hard to convince you that him slaughtering like 30 dudes on the boat was just, an, that was fine. That was okay. Just, just, yeah. just hand wave hey, that. How do you love We're these fine. criminals so much? Hey man, because you know, Kevin, so they had, I'm dude, doing it for Kevin, years. if they had shown me that these guys were actually criminals, I think that would have gone a long way, but all but we they get told you is a lot, and that's a one lot of the mercenary food. guys is kind of rude. <laughs> to the, the doctor legitimately yeah. just kind of just rude. not even no. like mean or like he like was having a bad day yeah, like yeah he's just like hey i'm not i mean i guess he was kind of misogynistic as well so he was a dick to her like he was mean but they're trying to make that the reason why the audience should be okay with morbius tearing them limb from limb and systematically hunting them down and it just doesn't work like granted i don't it doesn't dissuade me from liking the character because i just don't like the character anyway but it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere it, it doesn't endear me to this character at all i'm i'm glad you mentioned your favorite line right there greg because my favorite line happened 
um, kind of like right as they enter this jail and they go, your lawyer's here. And in comes Milo, like you were just mentioning. And he goes, lawyer, I don't remember you graduating from law school. Oh, and he goes, no. well, two years of blah, blah, blah. I dropped out. And like, we don't need that. We know what's happening. We know he's lying. He lied. Yeah, he lied. Like, <laughs> we don't need this. <laughs> It's you should so get out of terrible. here at any cost, yada, yada, yada. Milo gets up, and he's like, I left something on the bed for you. It's a bag of blood. I left something on the bed for you there, Michael. And he walks out the door, and then as he walks away, he, they kind of want him to have a Kaiser Soze moment, right, where he, like, takes out his little uh, thing of a uh, uh, flask and drinks it. He's like, eh, never too early. And it's blood, guys. You see him go from being the frail Milo to being vampire. He's okay, Milo. He's and then around. He's freaking Meanwhile, like, again, yeah, just the trainers. worst – the worst jail staff in the world Leave has just missed cane the fact in there. that there is a bag of blood in the bed and a cane in Michael Morbius's cell that has been relocked. Morbius picks up the cane, is angry, throws that down, then he drinks the blood. He figures out at this how point, many like look. I understand it's a vampire movie to some extent. This is kind of more of a horror genre movie than a superhero movie in some points. Fails in all regards. But how many times do we need to see Jared Leto? sucking down fucking yeah, blood with yeah, two yeah. hands ringing it man like Just it is ridiculous how many shots of him thing. sucking blood not from a human from a fucking like bag it's ridiculous yeah. it's weird so he breaks out of jail he explodes out the side of the fucking place and again this echolocation it's not even really echolocation it's i need to see this person magic and then boom it's there <laughs> and what he does is of course listens in and finds milo at a daily bugle stand a, a newsstand reading it and this is another one i forget if it's chameleon or rhino or who gets referenced on this page but it doesn't matter yeah so to, just so people are clear on like what what made the movie versus the the trailers and stuff so in the trailers there was a shot of oscorp building that is not in the movie at all there was no reference to oscorp period in this there are many daily bugle references in this the spider-man murderer poster is not in this movie at all uh, but the black cat reference the rhino reference chameleon reference are all uh remaining on the daily Bu on the daily bugle but a lot of them don't even necessarily make it sound like they're villains like i think the rhino thing just said something about a rhino at a zoo all right so i, I leave, leave me some comments because i want to know exactly what some of those things said but it's like black i'll cat, buy you the 4k blu-ray so you can go get all Thank the screenshots you. You i want. appreciate that you know, you know. Case. anyways and the guy's like oh fucking the newspaper <laughs> man's like oh man gets what he deserves because it's about michael morbius going to jail or whatever he's like what do you fucking mean by that he's like well look at him he looks like a bad guy he's like well i don't look like a bad guy but i am and he bites him and so then morbius shows up and they have a whole argument and then they start fighting in the streets and then they start fighting in the subway and there's a lot of slow-mo and there's a lot of stuff going on and again there's like they fly down the subway staircase slash escalator and like do the thing where you like splay out on the the uh l the linoleum no the granite marble and like they've been fighting and they just flew 900 feet and people keep just walking by them and again this is shit. where i go back to like this is a New York that has seen a lot of Spider-Man shenanigans. <laughs> They're like, listen, I ain't got time. I got to get to work. I'm they going. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry this shit's happening to you crazy people. And uh, they argue and fight. And then the cops show up. And Milo kills one, a bunch, two of them. And he does. He punches the wall and takes a piece of that and flicks in the guy's face. And then kills the guy over here. Might suck his blood. I forget. And then he runs. And Morbius runs. And yeah, this is where they get down. And they they. they <laughs> just way too long running next to the train and morbius figures out he can fly and he jumps and he flies and he flies away and gets away and then uh we're off to the races here now of what's going on um the cops are trailing bancroft but eventually uh you know she gives them the slip by going into a, a corner store and then she gets on a bus and then morbius is on that bus i guess his super hearing did it and that's when they go to the diner like we talked about before he has a good <laughs> joke about vamp i'm not that kind of vampire being afraid of the sunlight or oh whatever god that's she's when he gets like his bad, bad his new like lab to do guy. his shit or whatever yeah. meanwhile you know milo is just being fucking milo out there he's eating people he's sexing people he's you know he goes to the club and he finds a hot young lady he'd like to make maybe a vampire or just have sex with but then her boyfriend's a dick about it and so he waits outside and then he eats them and then you know of course this is where the cops show up and they find the cameras and they're like it's another morbius clearly and then they look at the shit and like oh my god it's like, it's not a morbius that's not a morbius that's another man and so then you know they leak that to the press and that's that they say like somebody leaked this information and then they have the exact same screenshot we just saw from the tape i'm like that's a pretty big leak or whatever and so now they're saying it's a copycat thing um 
uh yeah then uh the woman bancroft she goes in this the thing with milo and the heartbeat uh she also then you know the cops are following her but they get there to her house and there's nothing no cat and they're like oh yeah she's at morbius's substation <laughs> this is good to the house and there's no cat yeah. <laughs> like i love that that this is what greg remembers from the movies like those plot points and it's like you're right that is the yeah. way that they showed us mm-hmm. they're not theirs that there mm-hmm. was and no it's also cat. like the thing of like i love it because they do something that's an audio thing that you go yes and then you go wait no did you catch it with the cat or anybody the, raises cat letter? people yeah. yeah so if you were if you came to a person's house and you wanted to see the cat was there you would shake the treats the bag of treats yeah. the food or whatever and the cat would come out in this movie the yeah. man kneels down and shakes the litter box and the cat doesn't come and he goes no cat here yeah. And it was that thing where it did the audio sensation of yes, that like, wait, that doesn't track. No, you don't sh- cats don't come when you shake their litter box, they come when you shake their food. That was a weird, that was a weird choice. That's all they had. Is it, this- see, I I didn't know that. I mean, it makes sense. And like I have dogs and I had to make noise to get them to come to me, and that yeah. makes sense for the treat thing. I thought it was them looking for poop and there was no poop. And they're like, Well, clearly the cat hasn't been here in a while. They're not no, that no, good. That wasn't the move. Well, anyways no. though um that, all that happens then uh you know we're you know uh milo's and you can't find him or whatever and so his move here is now uh to go attack uh madman the madman doctor and so uh yeah you know he uh, madman doctor comes to check in and like to try to talk milo down and help him and he's like i it was always about michael you were always my favorite haven't you seen that and he goes and he slashes him in the belly and then he bites him on the neck <laughs> and he's like oh no but now i don't have to kill him even though it's close to, but then he's like, give Michael a message. They're like, damn, man, like, how's he gonna give this fucking message? But Michael calls. He's like, he could probably hear you with his cool hearing. Yeah, yeah. he's got it. He calls. He's like, like hey, Michael, I came. I thought I could help Milo. And so they, Michael, he goes over <laughs> Nick there. Is somehow disappoint, disappearing more in his frame. Nick's so gonna be sitting crisscross applesauce in the in the back left corner. <laughs> that yeah. all happens, right? And then it's like, all right, now it's go time or whatever. And so so at that point, Milo had done that. They then get to Bancroft. So he's got Bancroft. And this is when he does the super hearing that goes everywhere. And then he finds him immediately. And he flies over there. But it's too late already because uh, Milo's bit uh, her. And so she, uh, he's over, Michael's over her body. And he's like, no. And she's like, don't let it be for nothing. And meaning like, hey, kiss? fucking eat me. You got to eat me right now to, to get the blood red power you need or whatever. And so they kiss but her being a student of the franchises, understanding how vampirism works, bites his lip so that mm-hmm. his blood falls into her mouth because she knows vampire shit more than yeah. he does. And so then he sucks her blood to get the power and he leaves. But spoiler alert, she'll come back as a vampire at the end of this movie just for two seconds. So, you know, she's back. Anyways, then he goes I after Marlo. I was confused by that because I thought she had maybe coughed up blood. That's I, did, I, I didn't feel too. like it was really properly. It was horribly shown. Yeah, because she shown. like. I thought she coughed up blood and then they kissed and I, I was like, is she turned on by tasting blood? What's going on? Like, I was very, very confused about judge. what was happening here. We don't judge. Uh, oh, Jesus. And then, uh, yeah, then it's the big fight and they're fighting and people are watching and then they fall like 9,000 stories into a subway that's under construction or some shit and they're fighting there and eventually, yeah, you know, Michael's like, you know what? I got the perfect thing and he calls all these bats out. We didn't know he could do what he does it and then the bats all, uh, you know, attack and but they also just kind of confuse Milo. And so then- th- this is another thing like what I was saying about like the bad guy's just better but then like Morbius does tests and shit. Like he has that line earlier where he's like, uh we're like brothers and yeah. it's like well aren't you me. also brothers with matt smith yeah. like i i just mm-hmm. it it doesn't make sense like the movie set shit up so that it can like have a plot and then it just actively treats other characters as if they don't need to go through that yeah, same those, experience it, it breaks its own rules and that that was one of, that was one of the end two where i was like wouldn't wouldn't matt smith also be able to stop those things from like doing whatever one you know like i don't know just because it's kind of weird and then i was thinking oh he's gonna like lunge in for the killing blow here with this with this needle and matt's gonna catch him and then uh, uh bancroft's gonna come and like stab him or something like that and she's like i'm alive and we're, we're friends now we can live forever but no he just kind of stabs him in the chest stabs and we him don't in even chest, see by the way he turns we into a thing we don't even see him depress the thing he just stabs him so i thought he was gonna like say a line and then hit it go, and it was gonna kill him and he, now he just dies yeah, I thought that like, oh, it's not even in yet. So Matt yeah. Smith still has a way to get out of this. But yeah, no, exactly. then you no. start to see the the de transformation. I don't know how to pronounce it. Mm-hmm. Well, deformation. I don't know. Deformation. 
becomes that. Uh, and luckily, we don't have to see the goddamn nose anymore. Jesus Morbius Christ. stands alone. He's now Mr. Morbius, Dr. Morbius. I apologize. The woman comes back from the dead. Uh, he flies away or whatever. And then that's Morbius. And then the end credit scene we already talked about. <laughs> the fucking... Just like the font treatment and everything is just so terrible, Tim. Like the way everything I, pops up, it's dude, like, yeah. What movie is this for? Did you just grab this off of some template site? Straight up, it's like it, it's funny because it the the font choice, the the like just vibe and look of it all, it's cool, but it's also the most generic cool possible. Mm-hmm. And it's like we are like at least six years past that being the move. Right, it's, it's like they went to stream elements and just found like exactly. free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a generic Twitch channel, and it's Morbius. Yeah. Like they intro the movie with it and outro it, and it just makes absolutely no tonal sense with there was no anything blue or this purple. movie presents. Like, and it's a different purple. Like that's the thing is, if yeah. it was like purple and red, I'd be like, okay, that makes sense. No, it is kind of funny blue and pink. Like yeah. Gia looked over me like. This is kind of funny live one. <laughs> like, this is so like, ridiculous. <laughs> but all right, guys, here we are. It is time to get into the thick of it. Greg, do you have the Ragu Bagu list? I sure do. The Spider Man universe. Andy? Are we doing it? Uh, Ragu oh, Bagu. I thought we were doing Haikun review first. Let's do Ragu first. Do 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 ragu do 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 ragu. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rag Guys Talk Bad Guys, the podcast within a podcast. We rank all the villains of the Spider-Man universe. Uh, currently, the list looks like this: number one, King Kingpin Eat Al. Number two, Doc Con. Number three, Lizzie. Number four, Norman Gosborn. Number five, Electra slash Gonby. Uh, number six, Evil Elon Musk slash Riot. Number seven, Venom slash New Goblin slash Sandman. So we need to rank Carnage and oh, and, oh Shriek, Carnage, Shriek, and then also then uh, Milo. Mm. I just want to start by saying that I really, really, really hated Milo. I don't okay. think that there's like he made me laugh with the dancing for all the wrong reasons. I'm not going to give him any points for that. Like, I think that it is one of the worst villains we've ever had because it's 2022 we should not be doing this still. And if we are going to do it, do something better than how you did it here. They didn't even follow their own rules for him. He didn't do a single thing cool. Legitimately, anything he did, Morbius did better and cooler. So I'm, and he didn't even have a plan. There's no plan. There's no like, I'm taking over the world. There's no, I'm going to do this thing. Like he wanted to travel. <laughs> you, yeah. Useless. <laughs> Absolutely useless. And honestly, the best thing about him is the fact that he decided to, to go by Milo for his entire life. Mm-hmm. And I it. almost want to bump him up the list for that. Oh, but no, I, I think that he is, I think he's last. I would put him at number six, below Electro and Gobby, and above evil Elon Musk slash Riot from Venom 1. I, I think Milo, I, I think that this entire movie is a bad monster movie. And so Milo is a monster. And I, he was, I, I thought it, at times his, his, his uh, face looked cool. And then when he was killing people and being a vampire, it was neat at times. I, I would put him last. I'm, I'm, I agree everything that, uh, that Tim just said. Terrible all around, not entertaining. And uh, the dancing was really just a bad choice. Yeah, I'm with Andy and Tim. I think cool. that there's just a lack of motivation on this. There's no real plan or reason where at least, you know, Riot had like a, I'm trying to do something. You know, this, this serves a purpose to some degree. All right, so then where do you want to put um, Carnage um, and Shriek? I would put them one above Riot just because Woody Harrelson is just so dang fun. <laughs> He's just fun <laughs> to watch. <laughs> For me, the bottom of the barrel will always be Venom, New Goblin, Sandman from Spider-Man 3, and I would put them below that. Uh, can you read the bottom three again? Sure. Right now, number six is Evil Elon Musk slash Riot from Venom. Uh, number seven is Venom, New Goblin, Sandman from Spider-Man Three, and number eight is Milo from Morbius. I go. I, I put them above. Second to last is where I'd go with this. So you want it to be Venom, New Goblin, Sandman, then 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 these guys, then Milo. Yeah. I would like put. I would put them above uh, Elon Musk. Okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna have to do hands then. Who thinks they're better than uh, Milo from the fucking uh, one we just talked about? Everyone's hands are up. Who thinks it's better than Spider Man's three villains? Mm, actually, no. All right, so that was it. That's uh, there you go. So then they are number eight. It goes Carnage and Shriek. 
And now, Andy, it is time for Haiku and Review. Seven syllables in the middle. You need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. Eric Myers writes in and says, won't watch this movie. Read on Wikipedia. More like Borbius. There, there we go. Less okay, BS. Soda says, I think Kevin's right. Stop going to these movies. And go with Gobi. <laughs> Kevin Kennedy <laughs> says, Hollywood execs, they think we're fucking morons. Please know Morbius. <laughs> wow. That was good. I like that. That, was, that good. was good. That was good. Uh, and then, Andy, you're going to like this one from Tracking Shot. Sam, bloodless blood sucking. Is that the Dark Knight soundtrack? Mm. A sinister snooze. Seriously, Hot Zimmer needs royalties for some of those tracks. <laughs> it is really bad, man. Like, yeah. it's straight up the same copycat shit, man. The same shit. Also, they said the word Bloodborne once, which is kind of cool. Oh, old hunters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the homie Pargot writes in and says, Tyrese can relate to insatiable bloodlust. He's been hungry, too. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Worth it. And everyone... It's time to rank <sighs> Sony's <laughs> Sony Picture Universe of Marvel characters, aka the Sony Spider-Man universe. Currently, number one, Into the Spider-Verse. Number two, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Number three, Amazing Spider-Man. Number four, Spider-Man 2. Number five, Venom. Number six, Spider-Man. Number seven, Spider-Man 3. Now, we need to rank Venom 2. Greg Miller was off being part of the birthing process of little BJ. Mm-hmm. Yep, Venom, yep, 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 Carnage yep. came out in theaters. He has now watched it, so he needs to settle the score. Where are you ranking Venom 2, Greg? So if I read this correctly, mm-hmm. <laughs> what it is a drawing here? Don't worry about our votes. Well, Don't okay. worry about our votes. Well, well I just want to do this to the listener news. So like when I vote, they understand where it's going. But if you're going to recap eventually, uh, as you know, I think you all are crazy people for putting Spider-Man at number six. Uh, but as the list works for me, I go down the list from the top till the movie. I think uh, I find the one that I think this is better than. Right. And so for Venom, let there be carnage. I am voting Venom. Let there be carnage as number five on this list above Venom. Wow. Wow. So because I, of that, I haven't talked about it all. I, I mean, what I thought of Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Go uh, for it. Not a movie I enjoyed, but I appreciated that they just said, "Hey, this is a comedy." Okay, that's fine. If I, I, I Venom, Venom originally, I don't think knew what the fuck it was trying to be. I don't know if this one was trying to be a comedy, but it is so fucking stupid and bad that I was like, "I'm laughing at you the entire time." When Woody Harrelson uh, is on fucking. Uh, when he's getting lethal fucking injection and goes something wicked this way comes I'm like all right you got me you stupid fuckers like, <laughs> and then like <laughs> god damn it the end they got a giggle out of me when eddie and venom had said it together of like lethal protector i was like you guys are fucking stupid and a travesty to this character and everything that is spider-man but that was funny and look at how bad this green screen looks of him on a fucking beach fuck yeah. this movie so there we go. Because of that, both Greg and Kevin put Venom, Let There Be Carnage, at number five. Nick and Andy both put it at number eight. And I put it at number seven. So because the way our rankings work, it comes in at number seven. There it is. Making our new rankings. Number one, Into the Spider-Verse. Number two, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Number three, Amazing Spider-Man. Number four, Spider-Man 2. Number five, Venom. Number six, Spider-Man. Number seven, Venom 2. And number eight, Spider-Man 3. But now we need to rank Morbius, everybody. Where do we rank Morbius? I think it's last. Yeah, I would say dead last. Like, because even Venom 2, I don't remember being like, I want to leave. I really want to leave this theater. But by about hour, I don't know, one of Morbius, I'm like, I'm really getting antsy. I want, I just don't want to be in, I don't want this experience for my life anymore. So I'd probably put it, at, I'd probably put it dead last. I would put it second to last. Uh, again, I don't give a shit about Morbius as a character. So the no. fact that the movie is shit is like, whatever. I, I really don't care. But I think Venom 2 was more of an offense to me because I know what Venom 2 can be and what Venom can mean to the like MCU if, if uh, Marvel and Disney were to take over. And the fact that we are being robbed of that 
I hate it even more for that. So it's like uh, this Morbius is number eight for me and uh, Venom 2 is number nine. See, Andy, I'm with you with that whole line of thinking of like, what does this do to MCU? And I agree with you. Obviously, I care about Venom infinitely more than I care about uh, Morbius. And I care about Spider-Man infinitely more than I even care about Venom. But getting the Vulture, getting a good Vulture in Homecoming, an amazing Vulture, one of the top of our Ragu Bagu lists, and having him now having to deal with this shit, I think Morbius fucks, like, just the post credit scenes alone, fuck things up more than Venom does for the MCU ever, especially because it seems like we're going to be getting a somewhat proper Venom somehow, or at least the symbiote in uh, the MCU. So that's why I'd, I'd go last on it. It's less of what he does... It's us of the involvement right now and more of uh, this could be something way better under the right hands. Um, and also, again, I didn't think the movie was awful, awful until we get that to that jail sequence. Up until then, it was just kind of boring and kind of meh. Um, but the whole time through Venom 2, I'm just like, I fucking hate myself for being here right now. <laughs> Greg Miller. Uh it's interesting talking to you guys at that or whatever. Like, I really dislike the Venom movies. And so for me, I would put Morbius at number five. Like, the Venom movies are like pulling teeth for me, where I am like in this fucking end. Uh, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, again, a unexpected comedy, I would say, but also one that is just <laughs> terrible as these actors eat the scenery and are fucking, the sets look awful. Like, it, again, I'm laughing at it, not for probably sometimes maybe like, you know, with the lethal protector thing for the shit they want, but oftentimes not and blah, blah, blah. Morbius is a bad monster movie and it was inoffensive in, for the most part. Again, ridiculous. Yeah, the post credit scenes are terrible and really do fuck up the vulture in a fun in a bad way, I should say. Again, you're transported to a new universe that you know immediately you've done. You look in the fucking they got better joint. Uh, weren't you doing everything you did in Homecoming because you love your fucking family so much? You're not worried at all that you've been teleported somewhere else? Whatever. This entire bottom of the list, with the exception of Spider-Man, which has no business being this low. I Fuck agree, Greg. Fuck Who it did all. that? We did that. And I mean, now, Andy, I mean, you know, the bottom list right now is Spider-Man 3. So you're saying that Morbius is better than Spider-Man 3. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm. Well, Kevin has officially fucked the list <laughs> because we the sanctity of the list has been destroyed, everybody. Coming in at number five is Greg. At seven is Andy. And me and Nick coming in at number I mean eight. Me refusing to watch it, I feel like that, like that must get, be at least one negative point against. That's got to be a zero point. That's yeah. got to be a last, the last. That's vote, a last. Like, that's last me putting in vote. last place. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know. Did James I mean, Willems see this yet? Let him yeah. vote. <laughs> Ironically, James Willems is not. I hit James Willems up and said, "Hey, Kevin's refusing to watch this. Do you want to be part of it?" And he's like, "Guess what? I'm also not watching it. Not because I'm refusing to. I just don't have plans to." So, well, can't you just do the vote? Can't we just do the hand raise and see where we wind up? Because it wouldn't Andy then be the official deciding factor on that? Because he's voting at a fifth, or where is he? Where do you put it? Seventh? I mean, we would need three to 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 push it to finally push it. If one person voted higher than an eight, then it would rank at number seven. I mean, again, here's what I said, Greg. We tell Tim circumcising the sanctity. Circum a well, there was a sanctity until Kevin decided to leave. There was a sanctity, Tim. Circumcising Spidey, we figure this shit out. We re rank. <laughs> I'm I mean, that'd be this. nice to try to set some things right here. You know what I mean? We're ending the episode. Sam Raimi, Spider Man, not able Venom. to this rank list Morbius. Has been defiled. We don't know. We don't know how good or bad Morbius is officially against the list, everybody. Didn't any of our other dumb friends watch this call? Carboni didn't see this yet. I don't know, man. I don't know. We're going to have to figure this out some other way. When we return to Kind of Funny's Sony Pictures universe of Marvel characters with Across the Spider-Verse at part hey, one, everybody. Oh let's go. We're getting one that's going to be either number one or oh, two, and I'm really God. excited for that. And then after that, get ready, Andy. Get excited. Get what do we have after Across the Spider-Verse part one? Multiverse of Madness? No. Crazy oh. Hunter. We have Craven the That's Hunter. That's not happening now. Oh, yeah. With Aaron Taylor Johnson. Yeah, mm -hmm. Good. It's happening. Good. And then Spider-Verse Part 2, a year from now. Anyways, I love you all.
Bye. Bye. Have a sticky day.